All right, all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Enough respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the earth. This lesson is going to be entitled Esau's Book of Enoch is Trash. Or you could say toilet paper or refuse or garbage or any other thing you can mention. All right. Now, I've been doing a series of lessons that, you know, had done a series of lessons over the past month, two months, or however long, dealing with certain fairy tales and different things, you know, and it's mainly for the new believers because you got a lot of Israelites waking up in these last days and they've been confused and duped by these, you know, different things they've heard. Part of learning the truth as an Israelite is unlearning all these things you learn growing up, <clears throat> one of which is hell. The angels have sex, you know, just different, different various things. Now, I did a series and I'm going to name some of the videos and I try to remember to put links to all these videos that I'm going to name for those that have not seen them all. You know, you might not have seen the series. I'll try to put links in the videos. I mean, a, a link in the video to tell you the names of these so you can, you know, you can catch up in that series. Now, the first video I did in this series was titled, um, <clears throat> And just bear with me one second. Um, go back a few. Uh, okay, so the first one I did, it was entitled Esau Lied, Satan and the Angels Never Rebelled. That was part one. Then I came back and I did Esau Lied Again, Satan Works for the Most High. Right? Then we came back and I said, Esau lied again and again concerning Lucifer. That was another one. Um, and then I said, Esau lied about hell. It doesn't exist. And that might be it. And then I took a break from the series and I filmed something else. So this is going to be like the fifth or sixth part of that series that I just mentioned. And I'll try to remember to put links in, uh, you know, links to those videos in order that they came out. I try to remember to put links in this in the description of this video. This one is entitled Esau. Esau's Book of Enoch is trash. And in teaching that, you bear with me here. And then been, you know, <clears throat> this is a goes along with with some of those some of those things that we taught because that's why I did some of the videos because people read the book of Enoch and you get all messed up. That was an old rumor. You know, that was an old uh should I say a lie mythology that angels two-thirds of the angels or a third excuse me satan and a third of the angels rebelled against the most high and then therefore they got kicked out of heaven and they came down here to the earth made bodies for themselves that's that's complete madness it's ridiculous it never happened if you believe that you believe that the most high doesn't have control over heaven how could that be possible the most high doesn't make mistakes and it never happened now i'm going to just get right into the lesson we, we covered that stuff if you watch the the subsequent videos of this series, I go into it in depth and break it down. Why Satan never rebelled. He works for the Most High. Angels never rebelled. And that All that was, was lies. And that even hell doesn't even exist. You know? Hell doesn't even exist. It's all broken down on those videos. So I'm not going to bother to get into that. But I'm going to have to touch on a few scriptures that I did read there. Now this first scripture, for those of you that read the book of Enoch, you need to put that shit down, man. But if, you know, hey, I read it. I wasn't moved by it. I think it's garbage. You know, it's not it's not part of the Bible. <clears throat> it's not part of the Bible. It's not inspired by the most high. You know, that's just some shit that Esau came up with. Now Enoch was a righteous man. He was one of the only one of only two people that ever lived that never died. He went and he was translated, which means the chariot came and he went from this life of the living over into the into the spiritual realm. He went to the heavens to be with the most high. So of course he was a righteous man. But those that say that there's a book of Enoch, that book is trash because it goes, it contradicts the Bible. And I'll tell you about some of the things I found in it, but I'm going to just touch on it briefly. Now, this is Isaiah 34 and 16 starting out. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That's plain. What's the book of the Lord? Everybody knows it's the Holy Bible. You know, the 1611. Now, some people will say that Apocrypha is not part of the Bible, but it was. It was a part of the Bible. It was removed by the um, Bible destruction group or the biblical destruction group to hide certain things therein. That book was a part 
It's been a part of the Bible way before we came to this side of the world. And these devils removed it. And plus on top of that, there is an apocrypha. It's proof that the Most High inspired that book to be written. The Holy Spirit came with Ezra and he, he basically dictated. And they, the men wrote down what he said. So that book is, is definitely part of the Bible. But the book of Enoch is not. It's not even mentioned in the scriptures anywhere. Not even, but not only because even when you when you go to the book of Jasher and Jubilees, they're mentioned in the scriptures, but the ones that they have now are corrupted. Esau corrupted those. This man has corrupted everything. And as soon as you realize that Esau, the so-called white man, is the devil, the better off you'll be. This man put all, all these different books. You got people that's, that's claiming, oh, well, you know, the white man hid the book of Enoch because he wants to know. He created that shit so you would get confused. Just like you got people believing in the flat earth and saying, oh, these devils, they tell you the earth is round. They tell you the earth is flat. They play both sides. They try to be the most high because the most high plays both sides. He He's in control of good as well as evil. And these devils want to be just like him, but they can't. It's only one, 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 only one almighty, excuse me. Now let's just go on. The scripture said what? Again, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth, it hath commanded in his spirit. It hath gathered them. Speaking on the men that wake up, you know, the, the, the people that get gathered into the truth, the Most High Spirit is doing it. Just like the Most High Spirit caused the book to be read. I mean, to be uh, written and read. The Most High said, men of, uh, men of God from old, right? They wrote down as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit, basically. And it's the same thing with, with the whole Bible. And the scriptures warn us that there's no other book you can mate it with. Now, the Apocrypha and the Old Testament, New Testament is one book together. But when you start talking about the book of Enoch and these other books, then you're going off. And the most I told guys, he said it specifically, you don't need to get into these other books. This is Revelation 1 and verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this, this prophecy. And keep those things that are written therein. For the time is at hand. That's plain. Blessed is he that readeth. Sure, you should read. You should study. But this is the book you should be reading and studying. The Holy Bible, which is on my phone. So, you know, don't take it literally. You know, also Revelation. Uh, I don't know exactly where it said. Let me bring it up. <clears throat> Just bear with me here. Phones are loading slow these days. Revelation 22 and 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book it's only one book you should be reading that's the holy bible but you got guys that want to get into that other stuff why because they want to seem wise they want to be deep go ahead you know the scriptures say you can be ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth you don't know shit and that book can corrupt your understanding because you start seeing things that are not there you think the angels have free will and human beings don't even have free will you can't you can't even get past that <laughs> That's, that's amazing. Human beings don't even have free will. How can angels have free will? This is Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished, be warned of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let's look up the word admonished. It's a warning. And it says what? To enlighten, gleam, admonish, shine, teach, warning, warn. And further about these, my son, be warned about these other books that can make you go astray. And further about these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end and much study is awareness of the flesh. You should not delve off into these other books. They're going to flaw your understanding. Now, the first thing I found, or one of the main things I wanted to bring out that I found in the book of Enoch that contradicted the Bible. There's a passage in there, and I don't remember where it said. I'm not going to read it and do all that, but I know I, I it said there were the angels looked like white men. That's the first lie. That's a lie. The angels don't look like white men. They're not white men. The way this world painted angels as naked gay babies or white little cherub with rosy cheeks, that's all lies. That their angels don't look like that. They never was depicted that way in the scriptures at all. You know, matter of fact. When people saw angels, they got afraid. Let me see if I can break up a, a, an example. And then I'm going to show you how they, you know, according to the scriptures, how they look. 
This is Judges 13 and 6. I think it's 6. Um, yeah, I started verse 6. Judges 13 and 6. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me. And his countenance was the countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told, neither told me, told he me his name. You see? And the angel came to the most high. I mean, uh angel came from the most high to Manoah, um, to Manoah's wife. Okay? And told her about Samson. You know, let me read that again. Um we start at verse 3 this time. And it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. You know? And it was talking about Samson. Now when you jump down to verse 6, Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me, told he me his name. You see? So when that angel came, he was described as being very terrible. He wasn't a little baby. He wasn't all hoo -hoo -hoo, laughing like Pillsbury Doughboy. He was very terrible. You see angels, you get afraid because they're powerful beings, high level, powerful beings sent from the most high. Now, how do they look? This is Ezekiel 1. They're not white. Ezekiel 1 and verse 4. And I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. And a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof was a color of amber out of the midst of the fire. A chariot coming down, a spaceship, if you will, a UFO, flying saucer, whatever you want to call it. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, angels. And they had the likeness of a man, they looked like men. And they had everyone, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their foot feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. If you know anything, that's the same way the Savior is described. Same way the Savior is described. These men, these men, the angels are described. Let's go to Daniel real quick, Daniel 10. Now, people love to say that that ain't talking about that color. Yeah, it's talking about that color. When you look it up, it goes into it, burnished brass. Daniel 10 and 5. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. His body also was like the barrel in his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass and the face of the words like the voice of a multitude. When you go into that word and you look up polished, it says burnished. Right? Polished. It says brightened, burnished, polished. Same thing, his arms and his feet, like in color of polished brass, and they sparkle like in the color of burnished black brass. When you go to Revelation 1 and 14, hmm. his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, with his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like into fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. The Savior was a so-called black man. The angels are so-called black men. The Most High is a so-called black man. The Israelites are so-called black people. Brown, dark brown, burnished color. You see, like I get in the sunlight. Like I'm, I am now compared to a, a leprous honky. They would consider me burnished. You see, the book of Enoch said that the angels were white. They going off. That book is trash. That's one of the first things I picked up. Let's go back to Ezekiel 1 and read that passage again. And this video wasn't meant to be long. It's just intended to just speak on it because I mentioned I was going to do the video. Ezekiel 1 and 5. Uh, I'm sorry. Ezekiel 1 and 7. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of the calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. You see? Even over here when you look up burnished. The angels are so-called black men. And there have been reports also. There have been reports. When people that have been up in this space, they witnessed and they said it was so-called black men, black people inside of the UFOs, inside of the chariots. It's all coming out, man. And you're going to find that out. Brighten, burnish, polish. Same thing. You see? Same word. 
So that's one of the first things that, you know, the thing that stood out about it to me. The Book of Enoch is trash. It's a bunch of fairy tales. Just like hell and the man down there with the red suit on with an arrow for a tail with a pitchfork to stab you to death or to burn you for all eternity and you're just a soul. Which is spirit. How can a spirit, you know, burn? It's pure energy. You see? Which, you know, it's that's neither here nor there. Now, the next thing about the book of Enoch that's flawed is the fact that you believe the angels, because that book says the angels came down here and they slept with women and they, they, they did all kind of stuff. You know, they showed people the secrets of eye makeup and different dyes and fabrics and colors and how to make weapons and all this shit. You know, it's a blasphemous book, man. It should never be read. And you out there, if you, you know, you guys, man. You got dudes that read the book of Enoch and start acting like they Bible scholars and shit. You ain't even you ain't even digested the Bible yet. You can't even get the fact that you don't have free will. Start with something basic like that, man, before you try to jump into that. That book of Enoch is gonna lead is leading many people astray. It's going to lead many people astray, and it already has. And because of it, many people are gonna get destroyed. But that's all right. You ain't the chosen. Now, dealing with the angels having sex, the Savior said this. This is Matthew 22. And they tried to trick the Savior when they asked him a question about this lady, right? Matthew 22, verse 23. The same day came to him Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now, there were with us seven brethren the first when he had married a wife deceased and having no issue left his wife unto his brother likewise the second also and the third and unto the seventh and last of all the woman died also therefore in the resurrection whose wife shall she be of the seven for they all had her <laughs> and this is like how you jakes try to ask questions and shit yeah in the book of genesis it said you know that the Lord made the sun and the moon on a certain day, but then he said, let there be light before the sun and the moon was created. What was the light? Dumbass niggas. And you get all mad when you get the answer, then they, it's not deep enough for you. It was daylight was the light. When the, an answer is not deep enough, you get all mad and hurt because you wanted something else to be metaphysical and this, you know. No, it's easy. It's simple stuff. Yeah, how was I answer and said unto them, ye do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of the most high for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of the most high in heaven now that scripture told you plainly that there ain't no hell you can read that and know ain't no hell he would have been like well you know what the one guy he went to hell there was five of the other ones they was all wicked they went to hell the only person that was alive was the man and the woman the woman was wicked and she went to hell so she ain't be nobody white you see but no what did he say he said what was his answer? Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Ye do err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of the Most High. For in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of the Most High in heaven. Now, if you know anything, marriage is sex. And the angels, this was speaking of when they died, and they go up in the spirit world, whose wife is she going to be? You're not like that up there. We don't have those fleshly desires in the spirit world. You're not up there eating food. You're not up there taking a bath and a shower and you living in a place. You ain't, you're not doing that in the spiritual realm because you're a spirit. Your flesh is the one that desires sex, uh, uh, food, drink, rest, sleep. You know, you desire those things in the, in the flesh, man. Your spirit is pure energy. And in the spiritual realm, which is after you die and you're resurrected up into the spiritual realm, you don't have sex. It said, But it said plainly that the angels... For in resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of the Most High in heaven. Meaning what? The angels don't have sex. They can't even come down here and choose women. And I made jokes about it before. You know, like the angels, these two angels sitting there together, Michael and Gabriel. Yeah, she fat. She fine. She got a fat ass. I want to hit that, Michael. Which one you going to get, Gabriel? I don't know, man. I like this, this Palestinian girl. She look kind of sweet. You know, no. That's not how angels, they don't even, they're not even like that. They're not fleshly beings like that. And they all are messengers. They've been created with a purpose. We have many millions of different types of angels and they all got their specific purpose. And they do what they've been told to do. They don't rebel. The book of Enoch says it's different. That book is, is complete trash. And let's just, you know, go on a little bit and we'll finish up kind of quick. I don't need to go into a whole big lesson about it. That scripture should told you plainly. It says what again? 
Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Ye do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels in heaven. Angels in heaven, they don't have sex. Well, that was in heaven when they come down to earth. They didn't, they didn't rebel against the Most High. We can prove that. Because if you're saying that the angels rebelled, that must mean that you're assuming that all the angels was good at one time. Right? They was all good. And then something happened. Satan convinced them, a third of them to, to rebel against the Most High. So then they turned evil and wicked and they and they rebelled. No, that never fucking happened, man. Because the Most High got evil and righteous angels and he controls all of them. If you can understand that. This is Second Chronicles 18 and 18. Again, he said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne. And all the hosts of heaven standing on his right and on his left. On the right, we have the righteous spirits. On the left, we have the evil spirits. You see that? But let's go on. He says, all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and follow Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit that stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? Now these spirits, the Lord said in, it in a meeting, evil spirits on the left, righteous spirits on the right. He said, Look, I need this king to die in this battle. How are we going to do this? And this spirit said, and one spirit said one thing, but then another came. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit. What kind of spirits tell lies? Evil spirits. The Lord has control over, over evil spirits. Right? Listen again. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil against thee. Now, if you're saying that the book of Enoch is valid, that book said that angels came down on their own accord and they made bodies for themselves. They had sex with women and they did all this mischief. You're under the assumption that all the angels was good and then they, they did their own thing. The scriptures say otherwise. They was up there in the heavens with the Most High and they was already evil. And he was in control of them. The evil spirit came out and he said, hey Lord, I got it, I got it, I can do this. And the Lord said, you know what, I like that idea. Go ahead and do it. You see, when people tell lies, Oh, when they write books like the book of Enoch and you think that it, Satan rebelled and he took a third of the, the Most High's angels, you know, you, you, you're basically making the Most High look like a fool. You think he's powerless, like he's some kind of bungling idiot. Damn it, angels, I told you no. Kill 45, not five. Or kill five, not 45. You know, the Most High's not a bungling idiot. He knows exactly what's going on at all times. He has complete control. It's complete order in heaven. Angels don't rebel. They never rebel. The book of Enoch is trash. Esau lied. Again, again, and again. He tricked you with the book of Enoch. He beguiled you with this dumb shit. You see? And you can go back and read that. 2 Chronicles 18, 18 on down. It gives you the scenario. Now, to prove that there are evil angels, this is Psalm 78. And I got to read a good bit here. About the Israelites. I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters to stand as in heat. In the daytime also he led them with the cloud, and all the night with the light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. Familiar? And they tempted the Most High in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yeah, they spake against the Most High. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Being smart asses. Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore, the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger came, also came up against Israel, because they believed not in the Most High and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven, 
and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow into heaven, and by his power he brought it in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. And he let and he let it fall in the midst of their camp round about their habitations. So they did eat and were well filled, for he gave them their own desire. You see that? So it's telling you that the Israelites murmured against the Most High after all the great things he did. Continuing on. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouth, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they st sinned still and believed not his wondrous works. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they saw them that they returned and inquired early after the Most High. And they remembered that the Most High was their rock and the high God, their Redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were, were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away. Uh, yeah, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yeah, they turned back and tempted the Most High and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he had delivered them from the enemy. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. And had turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. This is telling you what the most of the things the Most High did unto the Egyptians for the sake of the Israelites. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increase to the caterpillar and their labor unto the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the fierceness of his wrath, the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. You see? There was already evil angels. Since the beginning of time, the Most High had it set up that way. They didn't turn evil. Oh, yeah, the angels turned evil with Satan. They rebelled. Now I got to kick them out of heaven. No. No, no, no. The book of Enoch is garbage. Outlandish is a term that comes to mind. Ridiculous is another. Foolish. Treacherous. You know? Oh, he cast upon them the fierceness of his wrath of his anger, wrath, and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death but gave their life over to the pestilence and smote all the firstborn in Egypt and the chief of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham. There are evil angels that the Most High has control of all the angels but there are evil ones that set up to do evil. So when they did evil, they wasn't going against the Most High and they never rebelled. Why would they rebel? They don't have a need to rebel. I want to be evil, Lord. Well, you're already evil. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> you people are stupid, man. You be, but for those that get edified by this, you know, somebody will, will watch this and be like, okay, so now I get it. Because many people have said they believe, they understand now how hell, you know, is mistranslated and this, that, and the other. The angels never rebel. It's eye-opening for a great deal of people. But for the, most of you people, we don't give a shit about you. You're going to perish. Most of us going to destroy you. And, you, you know, if you're Israelite, you'll be reborn in the kingdom of righteous. Because you got a lot of bugged out Israelites. But for those of you that are Edomites, there's no hope for you. Go ahead and read the book of Enoch. Gobble it up. It's your book. You put it out there in the world. They even got versions of the Bible that they put together with. It's got the Holy Bible, the Apocrypha in it, and they put the book of Enoch there too. Included it all together so you would get tripped up by it, man. It's Esau doing this shit. Don't believe these devils, man. Believe that the people that the Most High sent into you of your own family. But if you don't, then it's on you. Now, one last scripture. This is Ecclesiastes 39 and verse 23. As he had turned the waters into saltness, so shall the heathen inherit his wrath. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. People see the way we break the scriptures down. They get all messed up because they haven't been taught that. They've been taught the other way. These are the same people that tell you 
they believe it's, it's a saying such as thou shall be nice, but then they go and kill up people all over the earth. They want you to be nice and smile and speak softly and don't be harsh. And then they go and send a drone and kill your whole family, man. You can't trust these devils, man. These fucking bloody devils, man. These Edomites. They're treacherous, lying serpent devils. And they're never going to be righteous. I just did a lesson on it. And it's going to be uploaded too. Either before or after this. Showing you that Esau can't be, uh, that he uh, was created to be the bad guy. And that's why you can have books like this, man. I'm sorry. Just bear with me one second here. Okay. So continuing on. And so the most high ways are plain to the holy, but they're stumbling blocks to the wicked. The holy, the holy nation is the Israelites. And even all the Israelites can't get it because they've been blinded by the most high. He said in Romans 11, the election hath attained and the rest were blinded. Let's continue on though. As his ways are plain unto the holy sword, his stumbling blocks unto the wicked. For the good are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. The Most High created evil things for sinners. He's doing that. He created evil things for sinners. He created evil angels to destroy wicked people and to do evil on the earth. So when they're doing evil, they're doing what they're supposed to do and they're not rebelling at all. You would have to be under the assumption, like I said, that all angels were good. Every angel was good. That's all they ever did was just be nice. They were just singing songs like they're dismerced and shit. No. The most I had complete balance. Evil as well as good. Need Pookie and Ray Ray somebody get shot in the head. I want you to go down there and put an evil spirit on, on Jojo them. You get mad and go over there and kill that guy. I want him out of the earth. He said I didn't exist. I said this in videos before, man. For the good are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. The principal things for the whole use of a man's life are water, fire, iron and salt, flour, wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape and oil and clothing. All these things are for good to the godly, so to the sinners they are turned into evil. Listen to this. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Ooh. You mean they wasn't created good and then they turned evil and did what they wanted to do? No, they was created for vengeance. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death, <clears throat> all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment. And shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. You see that? When the Lord sent forth a spirit to do judgment, <clears throat> they don't get all upset and feminine and fall out. No, Lord, that's just a baby. I'm not going to do that. That's an old lady. That wouldn't be right. They say, yes, sir. And they go and they do it. He said, I want this old lady, Miss Alma, whatever her name is, right? Back when she was 17. She mocked me openly. I want you to go down there. And when she put on a wig to go to church today, and then she go light a cigarette, I want a wig to catch on fire and burn her up. They don't say, oh, Lord, no, that would be right. She's an old lady. She's elderly. She's a golden girl. They say, yes, sir. And they go right away and they do it. You see? The people are assholes, man. But what do you expect? It's America, Babylon, the great. In close, man, the book of Enoch is trash. If you understand basic scriptures, you would know that. But you don't know it because your heart is going after something else. Those of you that's reading that book, if it's making you misunderstand stuff, really you shouldn't read it at all. It's trash. If you're a new believer, you got no business reading that stuff. People that have been in the truth for years, brothers like me or other brothers can read that book and just laugh at it. Because it, 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 number one, it doesn't have any prophecies in it. No history. Where is that at? No history, no prophecy. You see, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. White angels. Give me a break. That's a big glaring no-no. And obviously that Esau had that done. So that's it. Esau's book of Enoch is trash. Watch out. Don't get tripped up. A lot of stumbling blocks out here in the world. You know, and I just did that lesson, you know, for those, you know, out there. I mean, this was probably going to do it for this series. I don't know. Unless there's something else, you know. And we're going to be moving on to other things. So, you know, that's it.
and I'll try to remember again to put the, all the links to those other videos in the description you know so that you can just go and click on and watch them one by one because each one will help you understand the others and that's it all praise to the most high Yahweh by Shemi Hawasha double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone no respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the earth see you soon with another lesson Lord willing Shalom